Sveiki! Radījumā trīs stūri šoreiz bazitārists Fils Spaldīgs. I started as a bass player <coughs> before I worked, so I, I started when I was at school. And I think um, when I took a job, it was just to pass the time before I could commit to having a career as a musician. And I think there is no real secret to having a career. I just really wanted it. I really wanted to do it. I was speaking to somebody earlier on today about this and um, I think if you, you have the desire um, and you're prepared to be dedicated and to make sacrifices, then I think you can do anything. I think so. Because there's no real reason why I should have had a career except that I, I had a desire, I was dedicated and I made sacrifices. But I also made sure that um, I think that I, I, um, I could be myself as a musician. So I could put my personality through, through a bass. Sounds very strange, doesn't it? But, 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 it's, but it's true, you know, a lot of my, um, my life, the way I felt, everything that happened to me, they, it kind of came out in my, in my playing, you know. You know. My playing was uh, also <clears throat> an escape. I was 13 and the brand was a very <clears throat> cheap brand from uh, like a supermarket. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know why she bought it for me actually. I don't know why. Maybe I was I was interested in music, you know. I was interested in the sound. Down, 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 you know. And um, I just started to teach myself to play. I had <clears throat> I had one lesson and then after that I just taught myself to play. And to this day I can't read music and I can't write music, I, I listen. There is, uh, they trust, they tr trusted me at the time and also I have a very good perception uh, or also intuition. Hmm? about what is needed on on the recordings and I can also do it very quickly which is important I think to do it quickly you know really quickly you know really because sometimes these recordings these these sessions are going very very quickly you know uh, everything's happening really really quickly so for me it's important to do it quickly so I don't become bored yeah and also I think that you know if you can do it quickly, you have more of your your heart in in the in, in your performance, uh, your perception. In fact, also doing it quickly, <clears throat> sometimes you can make mistakes. But sometimes the mistakes are a good thing. You know what I mean? I know. It's like it's like painting. Yeah. So if you paint the tree this way, you can't really change it. You know. <clears throat> so you don't take the tree away and and change the colour, you know, it, it's, it's like, I would say it's like making a, a painting, you know, so you put your bit on the painting, you know, but I think there's there's a lot of trust, you know, people, people, um, people have trust, and also I think you're working on the same level, so <clears throat> the artists or the singers or the groups, you know, like for example, Robbie or um, Elton John, I was in some sessions with him, and um, we're all working at the same level, you know, so everybody respects everybody else. I think I did about about 70 albums, maybe more. 
but some of them I, I can't remember everything because you know everything's in my head everything you know my history recorded history everything's in in my up here it's it's recorded somewhere on the internet but so if I want to see what I did in 1984 or something I can look 1984 put my name and I can generally find it but I think it's about 70 albums probably more because there are some less well-known ones that, that, that are out there you know and that's not including you know best of blah 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 greatest hits or you know I think every 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 performance is important, and also there are just as many recordings and sessions which aren't so well known, which are still important. You know, I, I, I have some, um, I've played some fantastic sessions that might not necessarily be uh, massively commercially successful, <clears throat> but I remember things like. Um, Mike Oldfield, Moonlight Shadow, I, I can't forget that. That was a very special day. I think of um, The Lion King with Elton John, they, they were special days. Uh, certainly Robbie Williams recordings, they were always special days. Um, right said Fred, I'm Too Sexy. Do you know that song? Yes, I think everyone That was a really special day. <laughs> There's a good story with there with that, but you know, yeah, everybody knows that song, and, and you know, I, I'm very fortunate, you know, to be the guy who played on those records, and, and I think, <clears throat> may I say that with respect to to everybody concerned, I think I made a difference too. I think when I listen to those records, I think you can absolutely tell it's me. Um, because I have a kind of way, I don't know, just a way of doing it, you know, which maybe isn't so perfect, but um, it's, about, uh, it's about what feels good. I made a fantastic record with Mel C from the Spice Girls. Which one? Melt, it's a record called Melt, and uh, I'm very proud of that record. I like it for lots of reasons. Um, Melanie is a lovely person. Um, lovely person to be around and um, I like the lyrics on this record particularly because I very identify with them a great deal and also I played all the guitars and, and, and things uh, other things on the record and uh, um, you yeah, know just a particular recording it really touches me I, um, I get very emotional when I listen to that and maybe it's not so well known, I don't know, you know, it's well known, I think, amongst these fans, you know. And it wasn't such a big commercial recording, but it's still, um, I'm very proud of that record. That's it, yeah. I mean, there are many, when I think about it, there are many, many, many things we could talk about. You know? and I'm uh, fortunate, I think. So many, so many. Ray Charles, you know Ray Charles? Okay, yeah. I mean, I'm on one of his records and he's singing some words that I wrote, some lyrics that I wrote. Um, me and a, a friend of mine, uh, Richard Niles, we wrote some songs that he sang. I mean, that's a big, a big moment, you know. This guy's singing my words. You know? Can't believe it. And I did the session with a hangover, you know? Hang I mean, really like this, you know. I played with a t terrible hangover. But it feels good, the record feels good. I think I've, I've learned that I enjoy teaching. And I didn't think that I would enjoy teaching. I, I, I thought I would be uh, impatient, I, I wouldn't have the patience. 20 years ago, I would have been a terrible teacher. Uh, but now I'm older, uh, I see the... Um, I feel the excitement in younger people, you know, when they're, they're, they're learning and it takes me back to, to the way I felt when I was playing. And I think that um, also as a musician it's important to realise that if you're teaching, at the same time, you're learning too. You're still learning because, you know, we're still learning from each other.
so I can teach young, young, young people in schools, but I'm learning from them, I'm watching them, I'm watching their, you know, the way they approach something or the way they do something or, um, you know, watching them grow, you know, and I'm learning because hopefully it helps me be, help to become a better person. <laughs> I don't know, but um, it's a, it, teaching is a two-way thing. That's, that's, that's a, a principle I think you should remember. You know? I think that's very difficult to predict um, because these days the business is very different. It's a lot harder. Um, and if I'm working with uh, young people, I try to to remind them to try to be themselves, because I think everybody, you know, they wants to be like this or they want to be like that. They want to be like so many different things. And and the way I manage to have a career as a musician <clears throat> is is to be myself on my instrument. Okay, maybe in life. Um, I wasn't so good at life. I was always a good musician. And it's very hard to predict. And also, you know, young people come along. I mean, remember that now, these days, we have lots of music colleges and universities and schools. Mm. When I was starting, there was nothing like this. Not really. Not really. So, <clears throat> um, I think that for me and my friends, we had to really fight, you know, we had to fight hard to become a musician. Especially a musician who can't read music or can't write music. And maybe sometimes with young people these days, they go to music college, they go to music university. And I always remind them that if you're a musician, you're a musician 24 hours, you know? You're not a musician from nine o'clock till three o'clock. You know, if you want to be, I think, a successful musician, or what is a successful musician? Okay, that's the wrong thing to say. If you want to be a musician that makes a difference and want to have a career with so many people doing it, you, you have to, I think you have to put your whole life into it. You have to, as I said, you have to make sacrifices, you know? You have to be dedicated. You know, you don't come home from music school at three o'clock and then you're not a musician anymore. If you talk to me and my friends, we're thinking about music the whole time we're awake, from when we wake up in the morning until we fall asleep at night, you know. I think it's hard to predict. I think people that come through, that have a chance of having a career, are the ones that really want to play, really want to be a musician. If you want to be rich and famous, I say to people, go and get a different kind of job because it's hard to become rich and famous as a musician. Yeah? So if you want to be rich and famous, don't think about becoming a musician. But if you want to be a musician, then maybe you could become rich and famous. Yeah? Does that make sense again? Because I think, you know, if you put everything into it and you're good and you learn, um, I think also you have to be um, you have to be um, you have to be prepared to do lots of things, unusual things, go to unusual places. You know, I I, I say again, you know, the best things that happened to me happened because I was somewhere. You know, I was in some situation where something happened by accident. They're all accidents, but you have to be in it in the first place and then maybe maybe you can get some of these accidents you know so there are many people we could say that are successful but they're not necessarily famous i know lots of great musicians like that who you never heard of but they're great musicians you know i mean um you would only have to travel uh, around ireland for example and go to any of the cities and listen to the people playing every night that play for fun, you know, and have a few drinks. I mean, it's the most incredible country to, to, to see real musicians in the culture. But, you know, they don't want to be pop stars or anything, you know, they're, 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 they're happy to have the music in the culture. 
I think that's a very healthy attitude. You know, I was um, discussing recently about um, with somebody about trying to make to find myself one day every week, which is just my day, you know. And I'm not very good at it, really. I'm like doing, 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 you know. I, I do like, uh, um, you know, junk, junk TV, you know, shit TV, you know, like, 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 like just like, you know. If, if I get the chance, I did, I had a day, you know, I had a day last Friday, just this Friday. Uh, where are we today? Sunday, yeah, Friday. And I did nothing, and it was like paradise, you know, nothing at all. Just with the TV all day, you know, no shaving, no nothing, no changing, no nothing, you know. I think it's hard. Um, I'm kind of addicted to working. Um, I know. I, I also work in. Um, I do some work with this. Uh, did you see that I worked with hepatitis C? Yeah. Okay. That that's takes a lot of time as well because I had hepatitis C I had it and um, I was treated and um, I have a duty I think to spread awareness and do some work with other people in my town where I live um, I help to run a group of people who are affected by this illness so whether it's music or hepatitis it goes on and on and on and on. And I'm always looking in my diary and looking for a day and thinking, ah, this day I can do nothing on this day, you know. I'm not very good, really, Peter, really. Work, 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 work. It's, it's not work, I think it's living, you know. I'm living, I'm really living. And uh, I've got a good life. I have a good life, I'm very fortunate. When you're playing music, I think it's, for me anyway, the way I play music, it's important to really feel it, not like uh, something which is so remote, you know, it's distant. And I think it's like playing in a band, you know, when you play with the guys in, in, in the same room and, and whether you're playing live or whether you're making the recording, it's always, always much better together than on your own and sometimes when you're watching the screen you know like a computer you're like on your own and it's like an object you know whereas okay i can see how it helps but i think it's also important to share with a with a, a human being in the same room the first bands i i was in we weren't very good technically but we had a lot of spirit so you make your mistakes and you you know, maybe change some things or or maybe the mistakes are good, as I said before. I think you must balance everything. Personally, I think that it's important to get out with people as soon as possible and get used to it. You know, if you have people from the X Factor, for example, who go in front of a crowd on their own at the age of 22, or people that come, no, no, maybe not the X Factor, let's say people that come out of music college, and then they suddenly go to the public at 22, it's very late. I was in the public when I, when I was 16, you know, in front of the public, and my friends were, and you've got to get over being embarrassed, making mistakes, uh, drinking too much, you know, all this kind of thing, you know. And also, when you're in your teenage years, I think they're the best years to, to take things in, in on yourself. I think by the time you're 21, 22, 23, you're very, probably more conservative. I mean, if you were a footballer, you wouldn't get into a football team when you were 23, would you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, well, you couldn't. Mm. You'd be in a football team from 10. You know, you'd Maybe be a... Earlier. Maybe earlier, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it, it's got to be the same thing, I'm sure, you know, I think it's, get, as, as young, you know Elton John was playing in a pub when he was 12, 
And I saw an interview with him where he said, if you want to have a career, you've got to play live. Okay? Yeah. So right now, he's been playing live for 55 years. And he's very good. <laughs> But I think that, you know, start soon, start, start soon, you know. If you started playing football when you were 20, you'd be, your muscles would be bad, you know, you'd have a, you know, you wouldn't be, you know, you've got to start playing football when you're small. Same as a musician. Start as young as you can. For me, it was uh, 12, 13. But lots of the young people today, they play, in teenagers, they play much better than I could play when I was their age. But they have much more help. I think we, we said this earlier on, with the internet, the colleges, schools, reality TV, you know, living your life through a screen. No, I think, I mean, the thing about the music shows is that they reach a lot of people. So that must be a good thing. The one thing which is um, difficult is when someone is young and inexperienced and suddenly has this high position. Because if you don't have the experience and you don't have any uh, training, it's very hard to keep it going. I mean, re yeah, remember, you know, if you're 20, 21, 22 and you suddenly have this high position and you never, you never sang in front of people really before, it's a, it's a hard age to start. I, I listen to the things I grew up with mostly. I listen to Led Zeppelin, um, the Rolling Stones. I listen to the Kinks a lot. I love the Kinks. Um, the Beatles, I, the, the Beatles, they're kind of in my life. You know, they're just they're not something I. I there are some certain songs I, I, I listen to especially. I like the early Beatles when they were like, you know, really playing rough, you know. I listen to The Who, all the stuff I grew up with. And I think it's important to say that for me, at my age now, I feel the same way now as I used to when I first listened to them, you know. In fact, I probably feel better now. I, it, you know, it's still something that I go back to. You know, if I'm, li if I'm at home on my own and I want to listen to, you know, loud, and I put the headphones on so it's really, really, really loud, you know, I listen to like um, Honky Tonk Women or Give Me Shelter or Whole Lot of Love or Black Dog. Do you know Led Zeppelin? Of course. Good. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. You know, I mean, I, I can't get enough of it. I'm, I'm sure I'll be listening to this stuff until I die, you know. I suppose I'm very conservative now I'm older. You know, strangely enough, I like Coldplay. But they're big, you know, they're classic themselves now. But I like their their kind of form. I like their songs, the way they're written. I like the chord sequences, which can which can all be changed around because they're all quite similar. I like the sound, you know. I like I like that sound. Um, and apart from that, I mean, I'm, I hear things here and there that I might like, you know. But remember, I have to find the time to listen. You know, I mean, I've been listening to. <laughs> I've been listening to. You know, I've been listening to um, Stevie Wonder, and I like. I'm like, oh my god, you know, this is so good. I've been listening to Sign Sealed Delivered. I'm yours. Do you know this song? Sign Sealed Delivered. I've been listening to it. It drives me crazy. I mean, the bass on it is, is incredible, and and it, you know, this stuff's nearly 50 years old. You know, I listen to Elvis Presley. I mean, Elvis Presley, Hound Dog, I still listen to Elvis Presley and it's like, oh my God, you know, that's rock music. That's, bah, bah, that's heavy music. Now remember that they are just uh, a bass drums, guitar, vocals, and maybe some backing vocals. There's nothing else on those, on those early records. And they're just, wow, amazing. I, I think I go back, I'm more further back, um, you know Frank Sinatra? Of course. Okay. So I like the Frank Sinatra swing. You know, the big, I've got you under my skin. 
and uh, witchcraft and these records like this. And now I'm looking for something further back. So I'm not going forward, I'm going backwards. I'm, back, I'm going backwards, you know. I don't know what else to say really. Oh, I love Frank Sinatra's record. Swing records. They're the best. Oh, amazing. Can you imagine, um, you know, with no computers and a big room with an orchestra and a vocalist and they have to play everything correctly with one recording. No overdubs. Not bad, huh? You know, they can't say, oh, we'll stop it in the middle and we'll, we'll hey, can you drop this vocal in? You know, you can't do it, it's impossible. That's what I love about these recordings and also it's what I like to play myself. I like to play uh, performance, you know. You don't find many of my tracks edited. You know, they're all played. You know, I, I, I learn it very quickly and play it quickly, you know, yeah. And I suppose that, that's why you asked me how, you know, to get on all these different records. Um, if you listen to them, you'll find all the little um, imperfections from from performance, you know. And I just, I mean, I don't know. Some, on some records I played some mistakes on purpose, actually. No one listens to the bass, it's fine. <laughs> but you feel it. <laughs> Oh God. It's nice to meet new musicians. I mean, this is new for me. This is my first day in this country, in Latvia. So I'm excited about being in a new country. And um, I expect for me to learn. That's what I expect. You know, I mean, I can, I suppose, teach or give people um, some of my experience. But I, I will learn, I'll learn too, you know, I'll learn too.